up until a few years ago, if you wanted to study your sleep, you'd have to wear an EEG monitor like this guy to bed. However, recently, consumer devices like the Fitbit have brought sleep analysis to the general public. Question is, how does a consumer device like a Fitbit stack up against a professional scientific device like an EEG monitor? To find out, for a whole year I've worn both this EEG monitor and this Fitbit to bed every week. And today I'll answer the question, how does the Fitbit stack up to science? Now before I get to what I found about the accuracy of the Fitbit, I first want to give you some brief background about sleep and sleep prediction because this will help us interpret the results. To study your sleep and measure your sleep stages, scientists use electroencephalography or EEG devices like this one that can actually measure your brain waves. Fitness trackers like a Fitbit on the other hand use very different data like your movement and your heart rate to try and estimate these sleep stages. In its simplest form, there are three stages of sleep. The most famous of these stages might be REM sleep or rapid eye movement sleep. The other two stages are light sleep and deep sleep. Now light sleep makes up the bulk of your night at about 50%. Deep sleep makes up another 20% of your night. REM sleep another 20% and the remainder of your night you can spend awake. Now these percentages vary, so these are just averages, but this is roughly how your night is divided. Now a normal night's sleep is divided in cycles that repeat themselves. Each cycle starts with some combination of light sleep and deep sleep and ends with REM sleep. If you want to know more about sleep stages and how sleep prediction works using both a Fitbit and an EEG monitor, I made a separate video about that, which I link below. Now that brings us back to the actual comparison between the Fitbit and the EEG monitor. And the question we want to answer is, can the Fitbit predict sleep accurately? Now in this I'm going to assume that the EEG monitor is always right, making it what in science is called a gold standard. As I mentioned, I measured my sleep using both the Fitbit and the EEG monitor for an entire year on a weekly basis. Now let's first have a look at how the EEG monitor says I slept on average. According to the EEG monitor, I slept for 6 hours and 15 minutes on average. 13% of the time I wanted to sleep was deep sleep, 20% REM sleep, 66% light sleep and 1% awake. Now let's compare this to the Fitbit. It says I slept on average for 5 hours and 15 minutes and I had 20% deep sleep, 21% REM sleep, 53% light sleep and 6% I spent awake. Now the most obvious difference is that the Fitbit predicts too much deep sleep and not enough light sleep. It also predicts a little bit too much time awake. I'm not exactly sure why the Fitbit predicts too much deep sleep. It might just be that it has difficulty discerning between the deeper parts of light sleep and actual deep sleep. Or it might expect a certain sleep pattern that I don't exactly follow and it still tries to match me to that. So that might bias it to predicting too much deep sleep for me. I want to go one step further and instead of just looking at these averages, I want to see if the Fitbit predicts the right sleep at the right moment in time. Now here I've plotted a single night of sleep where the line indicates what sleep stage I was in at each moment, which you can see on the left. In red I've marked REM sleep, which marks the end of each sleep cycle and you can nicely see that I went through four discrete sleep cycles here. The first sleep cycle has some deep sleep in it, whereas the rest just have light sleep and REM sleep. What we're looking at here is the gold standard, the EEG monitor, which we're assuming is predicting my sleep correctly. But we're interested, how does the Fitbit compare to this? Now let's see. So what we see here is that the Fitbit does indeed see my sleep cycles, at least roughly. You see that there are these, again, these four discrete stages of sleep with REM sleep at the end. Uh, but we also see that it predicts too much deep sleep. We see at the beginning of the night there's more deep sleep and it even predicts some deep sleep in the middle and at the end of the night, which, which was not really there. Now what you can also see is that it doesn't predict the exact amount of REM sleep correctly. It predicts a little bit too much REM sleep, but overall it's doing pretty good. If we actually want to put a number to this, we can divide the night up into segments of 30 seconds 
And for each of those moments, the Fitbit has to say, am I awake, in REM sleep, light sleep, or deep sleep? And if we look at it like that, we see that for this night, 73% of the time the Fitbit was correct. So that's pretty good. Now, looking at just a single night is not enough to draw any real conclusions. Therefore, I calculated the same accuracy, so the percentage correct, for each of the 50 nights. And this is shown in this graph. So each dot is a single night of measurements, and the line connects them. Uh, you see there's two points where the line does not connect. This means that there was one night in between that the data of the Fitbit was not useful. Um, sometimes the Fitbit doesn't give you a detailed sleep analysis, so for those nights I cannot make any uh, predictions. So the blue line indicates the average percent that it got correct, which was about 73.2%, uh, which is comparable to the night that I just showed you. So overall, the Fitbit is relatively consistent in its accuracy, though there are some much better nights and some worse nights. I want to move on to the last analysis and comparison of this video. It's the most complicated, but also the most interesting. Basically, I want to see, over all nights, what did the Fitbit get wrong, and which sleep stages did it get confused. In total, the Fitbit predicted 73.2% of my night correctly. Now, out of those 73.2%, 10.9% was correctly predicted deep sleep, 46.7% was correctly predicted light sleep, 14.7% correctly predicted REM sleep, and 1% correctly predicted awake sleep. But we also want to know what did it get wrong. We're going to do that by drawing what is called a confusion matrix. Now here's the confusion matrix. On the left you see the predictions of the Fitbit, and on top you see the predictions of the EEG monitor. On the diagonal you see those things that they predicted the same, so the things that the Fitbit got correct. It's the same percentages that we just saw, but off the diagonal, so everything in red here, is what the Fitbit got wrong. Now let's look at some examples. The first row, for instance, that has deep sleep in front of it, is everything that the Fitbit predicted as deep sleep. So in total, it predicted 10.9 plus 9.2 plus 0.1, that's 20.2% total as deep sleep. But 9.2% of that was actually light sleep. So it predicted almost double the amount of deep sleep that I actually had, and most of that was light sleep. As we saw before, I actually got 13.2% of deep sleep. And that we can get by summing up the first column that is marked as deep. So that's 10.9 plus 2.1 plus 0.1 plus 0.1 percent. So we can see that the Fitbit predicts almost all the deep sleep that I have as actually being deep sleep, but it predicts an extra almost 10 percent of deep sleep that's not there. Now there are two more things that stand out for me. One is that the Fitbit predicts a little bit too much REM sleep and most of that sleep is actually light sleep, so that's what you can see here. And it also overestimates the time that I spent awake. In reality, I only spent 1.3% of the time awake, which you can see by summing this column here. If you look at the last row here that is marked awake, you indeed see that the Fitbit picks up on almost all the time that I'm awake, which is 1% of the 1.3%. But it predicts way more awake time, especially when I'm in light and REM sleep, it predicts a lot of extra awake time. So that's one thing that we have to be aware of. To conclude, overall the Fitbit did really surprise me and predicted my sleep much better than I had expected. Especially given the fact that it's a fitness tracker and not a dedicated sleep tracker, it did pretty well. Of course it made a few mistakes, it predicted much more deep sleep than I actually had and underestimated my light sleep. But overall, I'm not disappointed. That leaves the question, what can you actually do with all this data that the Fitbit collects? Even if it predicted your sleep 100% correctly, for most people it would hold no value if they couldn't use it to somehow improve their lives. There's probably a ton of ways in which you can use the sleep data that the Fitbit provides, but I think there's one piece of information that's most valuable and most easy to use for most of us, and I just want to give you my take on that. We're living in a pretty fast-paced world and a lot of people, myself included, are usually not getting the sleep we're supposed to. And the main reason is that we're just simply not spending enough time in bed. And a Fitbit is a real easy way of keeping yourself accountable. It's really good at tracking when you go to sleep and when you get up and you can see in the app that you just didn't get enough sleep. So if you just want to keep yourself accountable, a Fitbit might be an option. 
I do think there is additional valuable information in a more detailed sleep analysis that gives you each of those individual sleep stages, but they can be a bit tricky to interpret. But if you have any thoughts on that, please leave it in the comments below or if you have any way of using that data. If you like my video, give me a thumbs up. And if you like my channel and want more content like this, please subscribe.